Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So still on the database uh, connection here inside functions. Uh -huh. So we have these variables. I want to replace this string here. That way we just change things here and they will change here. So instead of all this, let's put uh, these babies. Okay. Now, for the sake of... Um, Okay, no worries there. Let me just copy this and let me put it here instead and put a dot so I can concatenate. So remember, this is what the driver is. So I'm replacing this MySQL. And then there's a host. So I want to replace the host. Now, again, if we, what I'm doing here is connecting the strings, but remember that we have a, uh, double string here, double um, quote, which means I can put the variables directly in there and they, they're going to evaluate just fine. So I'll copy this and replace the local host. And the DB name, uh, we'll copy that and replace the DB name. Very good. So let's just make sure that uh, nothing has changed here. Everything still works fine. So back here and refresh, no errors, then we are good. Okay, so now this returns the connection. So once we run a function like this and we have a return, it's going to return the value of this into whatever item we added here when calling the function. So here I can say something like con is equal to uh, db connect. So whatever the return value is will be shoved in there. So with this in mind, I have a connection. So I can cut this out. Instead of calling it from there, I want to call it from within this function whenever I make a query. So I will do this. Okay, so there we go. So now I want to run a query. Now, this is PDO, right? So this is a PDO object, which means we can do something like prepare a statement. So what I will do is I want to grab this query, whatever this query is, and prepare it. And then the preparation of that query will be saved in a value code statement like this. So SMT, short for statement. So I'm going to say uh, statement is equal to use that connection and do a prepare, right? Like this. This is how PDO works. That's why I'm doing it this way, not my code at all. So you can read more about PDO on php.net, of course. So here, uh, con prepare, right? Query, very nice. So if things went well here uh, and the query was prepared, then I can do a execution. So I can say execute like this. So once I prepare the query and then I can now execute the query, okay? So now the return of that execute should be a check because we want to see if, uh, I'm just going to call this one check. This is just a variable, right? I can call it result if I want. Uh, that's uh, up to me, but uh, yeah, maybe let's call it that. Looks more uh, standard. So the result is an execution of this query. Now, normally a query will not have variables, so sometimes it won't. But if it does have those variables, we're going to need this data array to so it can get the actual variables, uh, the information from the variables. So we'll put it inside here. So this is why I put it like this, to have a default value. That way I don't need to check if there's data for me to add it there. So I can just put it there, even though there's no data, it will be empty, so no problem. And then we have to check if a result uh, came back well. So if result, because I don't want us to try and get some data from an empty or a false result. So if result is true, then let's do a, uh, let's get the data, right? So if result, I'm going to say data is equal to, oh, this is a problem. So I'm re overwriting this value here. So let me not use data. This is why I didn't want to use result here. Let me use check instead, right? So that here I can say result, right? So result is equal to, 
uh, statement. Uh, let me call it uh, fetch all, like that. Mm -hmm. So fetch all will get all the results, right? Now fetch all takes in one parameter if you want to, to tell it what kind of data you want to return. Do you want to return it as an object or as an array? So in my case, I want us to use arrays for ease of use. Uh, you can choose to use objects, that's entirely up to you. Uh, I do prefer objects actually, they're easier to work with, but it's entirely up to you. I don't know, um, anyway, let's use arrays. Most people like arrays, so this way we'll say PDO and do the double dot, and then we'll use, um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we have to use the word fetch underscore asok. Okay, so if we were, you wanted to get objects instead, you'd do that. But let's use the associative arrays and get that instead. Okay, so fetch. So why the double dots here? Now, if you notice here, we are doing, we're using an arrow like this. This is because um, PDO, this is a class. So when you're trying to get a function from within a class, use an arrow like this, okay? It can either be a function or a variable that is inside a class, you use this, like so. Now, this is a different version of this. So this one is what we get, what we use when the function or the variable, this time, this in this case, this is a variable. We know that because it doesn't have those double uh, brackets, so it's a variable. So it means we are getting a variable from within the PDO class, but we are getting it as a static value. So this may be something difficult to understand between static and an instance, but if you want to know more about object-oriented programming, I have a whole series on my channel. Just go to playlists and check it out. But this is the same as doing this. Right? We are simply, from PDO, we are getting a, uh, a value there. But the problem is we are not using an instance which is a, um, a variable like this. So this is not a variable. We are calling the class directly by name. And when you do that, you can't use this. This is just for instances or copies, uh, like I had shown you there when you are making a copy of a, an object. So if you're not using a copy and you're calling the class by name, you have to use these double dots. But otherwise, whenever you see this, just think of it as this. Okay, so PDO fetch ASOC, I like that, good. So this fetch ASOC is just a value that lives inside PDO, which when it, you supply it here, it could be an integer, I'm not even sure what the value is, but it could be an integer like two, right? Just, just stored in that variable. So whenever it sees that, it knows, okay, the number two is for an associative array, number one is for a normal array, number three is for an object, but it's difficult to remember numbers. So what they did instead is they put actual text as variables, which represent those numbers. This is why it's just easier to remember this than to remember a specific number. That's why we're using that. Okay, anyway, uh, result. Now, result can be several, uh, the result of this can be several things. Number one, it could be a Boolean. So it could be, it could return false, right? That could be one value that's returned. Number two, it can return an array that is empty. Number three, it can return an array with actual data. So these are the three possible outcomes of this. So we have to account for each one of these and no. So the only time I want to return this result is when I get number three. I don't care about this one. I don't care about this one either. So uh, any of these I don't care. I just care about this. So what I'll do is I'm just going to say if, uh, let's say, is array. So that's that eliminates one of them result. So the only time it's an array is on two of these occasions. So we've gotten rid of this. 
So obviously, if it returns false, it won't run here, but it may run if it's empty or if it has values. So what I will do instead is say, and let's put an and here and count, or we can just say not empty. That's one way to do it. Not empty result. But I want to be very specific. So not empty can mean a lot of things. Uh, could be an empty string, etc., etc. It will still work as not empty. But I want to be specific. I want to say count uh, result is greater than zero, like so. So if the amount of items in here as an array is greater than zero, so. If it returns as false, the moment it checks this, that's why we are starting with is array and not this one. Because if we start with this, we put it here, and then the result is false, it, this would generate an error because you can do a count on false, okay? But you can do it on an array because it's countable. So we must put it in such a way. Computers like to be efficient. So if you put an and like this, and then you put two... Uh, conditions here what it would do is the moment it checks the first one if this one is false it won't even bother with the second one because regardless whether this ends up as true it won't matter because this one is false so it still won't go through here so what it does is ju it just checks the first one whether you've put many or 20 ands here it won't care if this one is false it will abandon the whole thing and just continue down here so this means if we return a false, it will never check for this. Therefore, we will never get an error because <clears throat> the moment it checks the first and says, okay, this is false, it will exit. So good, 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 good. So far, so good. But at the very bottom here, we're just going to add a return false. Now, it's always a good idea to add a return value at right at the end of a function just so in case there's nothing that's returned here, you still return something at the end. But if things went well and we got here, we will never get to this because we will return right here. Because return exits the function. The moment it sees a return, it will return that value and ignore the code below it. So at this point, we just want to return the result. And that's it. So <clears throat> if things go well and it returns here, it will never get here. If it doesn't return a result, then it will be forced to get here and return something. Okay, pretty good. Simple and straightforward. So let's see if we can try uh, one um, query here. So what I want to do is I want to insert some data in the user's table, okay? So um, let's see how we can do all that in the next video. Yes. So this query will run all queries. So we just call this and it will call the other function and then it will run a query. So we'll see how to do that in the next video.